love. Nintunist, you love this. No, game. I was so tilted. I thought the game glitched. <laughs> or something. <laughs> Whatever. Winners finals, baby. Our first best of five <laughs> of the day. What's the number of the day? Isn't hard to see. Number of the day is no longer three. It's five, baby. Best of five. Sort of still three because they got to win three games to move on to grand finals. But Esam, with the way he's been playing, looking like it very well might be him. But Myron doing amazing work against Rivers in that last set we saw earlier with that crazy grab as you just barely saw, I believe. Now we're on Smashville, two tiny, two tiny rat characters going up against each other, or whatever the hell Olimar is, some sort of gnome, I don't know. Point is, two small things fighting each other. Stu the announcer. Yeah, you know, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog, and certainly those Pikmin have something to say about just how much uh, gusto they have, and Esam, again, with this ledge pressure, I mean, yeah, you're not getting back all that easy. Myron just getting batted around like a speed bag, and Esam is going to even it up at two stocks apiece. Two stocks, my friend. It's going to be interesting, because Olimar is the kind of character who's up everything. is pretty much amazing, especially that up smash with the purple pinkman. Pikachu's kind of a tiny character, though, especially with the way that he can pancake a lot of attacks. I feel like... You know, if Isan plays his cards right and presses the right buttons at the right time, he might actually do a pretty good job pancaking moves like that to uh, pretty much get around them. Zoning is going to be a little bit of a different tool against a character like Pikachu. He kind of just negates a lot of projectiles. Well, not literally negates, but metaphorically negates them by getting around them a lot with his own projectile in the Thunder Jolt, which flies at the perfect 45 degree angle. So if I were Myron, it's going to be really much more hard focused on getting on your way in. But then once you're in... All it takes is getting hit by one neutral air, which drags down into a smash attack, my friend. Pikachu, Pika, Pika, Stu. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's uh, generally what they say, and they do uh, oftentimes mean it, as uh, far as I can tell. But, oh, really trying to do him dirty under the ledge with the downbeat. Again, Myron not being gifted anything at the ledge. You have to earn the invincibility once you grab it. And... Esam is, uh, yeah, I think they played a few Olimars in their time. I think they might know what they're doing here. Ah, uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think he's ever played uh, against any Olimars in the past. Nah. I nah. Mean, certainly nah, not. No nah, Olimars. Nah. He didn't play against the Buzz for years in a game where Olimar was even better than this one, that's for sure. As that up throw True. is going to take the stock. It's rough, man, because on stage is where, like, I feel like Olimar really needs to take advantage of Pikachu here, try to get him at disadvantage with those up smashes, because off the level, I gotta be honest, like you mentioned earlier, he's gotta earn that invincibility by grabbing the ledge. Ain't no hitbox on Olimar uppy, there's no invincibility on that uppy, and off the level against Pikachu, that is easy pickings, my friend. It's the same thing that we sort of saw with Pikachu going up against Wadi like we saw earlier. There's no invincibility, no hitbox on that uppy. Pikachu, up throw, dead. Never mind. Good DI. Yeah. Trying to get some invincibility kicking in with the uh, with the whistle, but yeah, Esam timing him out perfectly, and yeah, that is a uh, it's a pretty convincing game one victory. Esam does get two stocks lifted off of them, but at no point did it feel like the control of the match ever went away from Esam. How do you keep an opponent from scoring goals on you? You have control of the ball. The ball was entirely in Esam's court throughout that first game. Yeah, if the ball is just a small hockitation getting back sent up to his freight, that is that is an up throw kill, which you can complain about Pikachu all you want, man. As oppressive as this character is, those thunder jilts coming in clutch. There are things to be said about a dash attack and an up throw that also kills, but Esam been saying Pika broke for years, my friend, and now he's actually right. Here we go. That it's it's interesting, man. He's out here trying to prove who the best Pika Pika is. Neither of these guys the best Pinkman, that's for sure. Mentioning earlier, but hey, it's all going to depend on this counter pick because I feel like if Olimar plays his cards right here, whatever stage he picks could work out for him. Let's see what it is. It's town and city. I like this pick actually. It's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you give yourself a nice little uh, nice little space to work with. It's pretty much an Omega stage half the time anyway, so. And uh, the platforms, it's not like you can't work around them. We saw just how effective Myron can be on this stage. I and mean, against uh, people who even prefer this stage, like Rivers, as we saw. For sure, my friend, for sure. And in terms of what, if you weren't here for it earlier, Olimar, he got a pretty crazy kill on Rivers earlier with a blue pinkman disjointed on the middle platform of Town and City. 
But yeah, on top of all of that, you know, the stage is just so polarizing on top of everything else. It has the highest vertical ceiling out of all the legal stages and the lowest horizontal ones. I believe the lowest horizontal, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, that's going to spell a much easier time for an Olimar to kill off the side with any forward smashers or side B Pinkman tosses in the purple Pinkman rather than Pikachu not able to get that off the top with the up throw or dash attack instead. So for tiny characters, Especially with one that's actually lighter than Olimar, if I'm not mistaken, in Pikachu. And just an My ever so favorite. slight miscalculation off of the Thunder is going to cost Esam. You'd think that they were going for that kill with that down B, but it winds up hitting Myron back to the stage. And Myron is able to make it back, though not uh, without a, uh, not without the few scratches. Sitting there at 86%. They were at about 70 before at the time of the stock taken. Uh, Esam... Though they are getting the best of Myron occasionally on the air. I mean, they've been doing extremely well on the ground game and catching Myron with these landings off of the platforms and continuing that excellent play on the ledge. For sure, my friend. That is definitely a very scary spot for him, to say the least. In neutral, though, it's a little bit of a different story. You actually see it happening right there before I'm even able to say it. It's funny because one of the biggest damage builders in this game for Olimar is the yellow pinkman, specifically the ear one, the electricity one, which does, mm. I believe, the, some of the most damage, not the most, that might go to the white pinkman, off of a pinkman toss. But yes, at the end of the day, this is the character that spouts out electricity constantly with most of his moves. That's going to be completely negated by the part of that yellow pinkman. So that's actually really, really good for Myron. He'll be able to bypass that a lot more easier as those yellow pinkmen are, in fact, immune to the electricity as that backer is going to take the stock. Myron taking the stock lead for the first time. Yeah, no real noted uh, type disadvantages for an electric mouse here, but... Uh, yeah, somehow that yellow Pikmin uh, doing a little bit more than you might expect as Myron sitting here at 162%, still very winnable for, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I was about to say winnable for Esam, and then this happens where you just get him off of the stage, building up all that damage, all of a sudden you're holding 60-70%, and then out comes that very purple Pikmin. Yeah, I mean, you think it hurt Olimar right there. Wait till you see what it does to Pikachu at ledge. That was brutal in Tunist. You say the least, my friend. You know, Pikachu's got a good recovery in terms of that distance, but if you got a big, strong, meaty aerial like that down air, especially with the purple Pinkman, you can be negating that hitbox. Yeah, it's not like Pichu's in which there's no hitbox, so you might not, you know, trade with it or anything like that. Pikachu is a little different, a little better in that regard, but if you got a strong hitbox, you can still negate it like Myron had the confidence, the boldness to say, to do right here. Let's take a look at this play once again. The down smash to cover both air dodge direction out of disadvantage, and then the down air perfect placement lingering hitbox to take out the yellow rat and put Myron back on the board. 1-1 one, one here in the loser's semi... Uh, Semi-finals? Winner's finals, my mistake. I don't know why I said that. Of King 2021. My sister's alma mater, believe it or not. She went to TCNJ, so it's nice to see. It's nice to see that they're still putting on some great stuff over here, man. If I was in the Smash scene by the uh, by around the time my sister was in college, I would have been a lot more entertained on those college visits, to say the least. You know, teenager getting dragged, you know, to on these little family trips, whatever. Yeah, around the, uh, around yeah. the campus, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, for all those, What uh, is even the point of college, Mom? Oh, yeah, God, that, I, like, all teenage tunisty, all up in there, angsty and stuff. Good times. Yeah, Good I, I times. mean, the, the only, the only tangible difference that I can really, uh, notice is maybe less flannel on Teenage and Tunis, but we're going to, uh, disregard that and get into game number three i'm just going to take that silence as a tacit admission Listen, man, <laughs> that's, that, that's the truth i had to i had some errands to run this morning i had to iron my shirt beforehand i had to get my workout in for ring fit i didn't have time to iron my pink polo shirt okay that's what i wanted to wear it was all wrinkly uh Screw gotcha me. it's all right yeah dude, look i just found something in the wash and i threw it on so we're gonna job, uh, yeah thank you yeah, you know sometimes it works out that way but yeah, it's going to be game three. But yeah, in the words of another Floridian, Big E, three ain't enough, man. We're going to need five, oh. potentially, for this one. And is again, Esam just hanging out at the ledge. This is like, no, this is supposed to be reversed. I'm the one who's supposed to be ledge guarding. And yeah, whether they um, 
whether they have a feast or a famine is going to come down to who really wins this neutral. You're basically playing Smash 64 now. If you lose advantage, you might just die. Pretty much, my friend. Although this Pikachu, as much of a monster as he is, there is some debate as to how which one of them is more broken. <laughs> you know, the best Pikachu in the game, the best character in 64, or this one. I'd love to find some way the two of them could spar up against each other. But yeah, it just might be whichever one gets touched first will be the one to die, especially with a Pikachu on the screen. However, at the end of the day, Myron's got that disjoint on deck. It's nothing like the Fire Emblem characters or some of the Zelda characters, to say the least. But those Pikmin are kind of a Meta Knight level disjoint. Not a sword, more like a knife, if you would. A knife that hits really, really hard into a meth lab somewhere. Shoutouts to the Pikmin. But up at the top, mm -hmm. town and city? Oh, man, dude, that's a high vertical ceiling. That is... I did not expect that to kill at that percent, but hey, Pikachu's pretty light character. Yeah, absolutely brutal stuff, and certainly no quarter is the order being given from Myron, the captain of this particular ship. And they run an awful brutal one. Esam, however, going to try to declare a mutiny on board, and it's going to be on Olimar with their crewmates by the side try to squash this particular rebellion and gain control of this best of five clip esam with these down airs i mean pigment bodies just hitting the floor and yeah myron's gonna have something to say about that immediately throwing out the purple pigment though uh does dispose of it rather flippantly that they do my friend that they do it's all about which it's all about using the right move at the right time like i mentioned earlier that yellow pigment which is the one we see on deck for myron right now Esam's not going to be able to negate that with a lot of his uh, elemental attacks, I should say, or energy-based ones, as those are electricity-based. It's going to have to just hit with some of the more physical hitboxes, like the up tilt or the back air or something like that. Neutral air will do nothing to get that off, as the forward air will get off the stock. Instead, Myron down to his last one on par with Esam, but a pretty huge differential right here is the up smash is going to take out Esam's final stock of the third game, going up 2-1 currently in the set count. Here in winner's finals, one more for Myron to advance to grand finals. Yeah, and this is just uh, just showing you can uh, you can turn garbage into gold pretty fast. Even when Esam has the uh, decided advantage in some instances. Uh, yeah, Myron can just kind of do that where they have that purple or the white one just on deck. And if you're light enough and you come in just a little bit too aggressively, you overextend by that half a step, well, guess what? I have just what the doctor ordered, and that is me uh, throwing this living plant into your face and kind of popping you right back out. So immediately, Esam telling him, all right, well, let's see you do it again. And I'm not really sure how much I'd be testing Myron's metal in town and city because they've proven it now. Yeah, I love seeing as well. He's definitely proven how good he is on this stage. What with that play we saw against Rivers earlier? And the fact that he doesn't seem to give a gosh darn about these blast zones at all. I will kill you at all sorts of wonky percents as the drag down is going to try to take out Myron right there. Really smart on Myron, actually, to up to not only throw those Pikmin away to make sure he's lighter in his uppy, but to drift left for that uppy around first, knowing that even after two hitboxes, that Esam was still able to keep the pressure on off the level and make that wall but it's not going to matter if he gets beaten to the punch on the actual stage every time. What does it matter if you're never off the level, Stu? Yeah, no, that is just uh, that is just a level of ratchetness that uh, maybe we, uh, maybe people from Florida are generally not privy to, but Myron, man, an actual secret savage up in this piece, putting Esam all the way into the 80s before losing a stock themselves, looking for that full stock lead at the very least, giving themselves some security... And, whoa, good tack by Esam to keep themselves alive. That could well make the difference in the long run, and it will make a difference on the scoreboard right now. Two stocks apiece, though Esam, a little bit of ground to make up. It's kind of interesting, actually, seeing as this up throw is not going to do it. No purple pinkman there. That's, that might have been a forward throw, actually. It was really interesting seeing Esam not go for the down air there, even though he seemed to be right below him as that forward smash is going to take the stock. Mayhaps he thought that he was just going to whistle armor through it or something like that and wanted to just do a neutral air to have like a lingering hitbox out so he would have a longer chance at actually hitting him so he could catch him at the end of that move. Maybe he was just playing the long game. I don't know. But either way, Esam was still able to eventually get the stock off this time around. 
But not unless Myron has anything to say about it. There's a yellow pinkman on deck, not gonna give a damn about the electricity. And I love seeing how all of our mains are able to utilize casual stuff like that. Little tidbits that Sakurai like to throw in, throw in in this game, like how yellow pinkman are, you know, more resilient to electricity in an actual competitive setting. It's very cool to me. Yeah, and now the, uh... Oh, yeah. No, Myron knew that Esam had to start swinging for the fences, but you whiff enough times, you'll find yourself striking out, and it's Olimar throwing uh, three pretty decent frames, and that's going to put them into Grand Finals here at King 2021. My word. That up smash just narrowly whiffing against the back of all. And this is what I'm talking about. The neutral air right there instead of the down air. Maybe he thought that neutral air would just stay out longer to negate the whistle armor. And I think Myron actually expected that, which is probably why he didn't even do it. That and the fact that he was up a stock regardless. So maybe he thought that the risk reward was just way more in his favor in that department as he seems to have been playing like that all set, especially after that first game. Myron just turning it on. We'll take a look at this final play here. I don't even was that wasn't a forward smash. That was a duff. I, I think that was a forward tilt. I think he just punched the rat in the face. <laughs> Showing you literal literal ratchetness, too. Yeah.